we would like to thank our Classy Climb Tour and channel sponsor, GTT Commercial Tires, out of Richmond, Virginia, the leading semi-truck care center. All right, let's try that again, man. The hateration of the internet. I am in the sticks, right? So the sticks won't let me be free. But here's the thing. Let me continuation my thought here. Donald Trump is the epitome of back to the 1980s. Now, what do I mean he's the epitome of back to the 1980s? His whole mantra, his talking points, his speaking points, they're from the 1980s. Everything about, you know, China's coming over to get us. I mean, you can swap it with Japan back in the 80s, right? J China's not being fair with us. They're not doing fair trade. They're not being good partners. All this stuff, we've heard it before. Um, 1980s, it's a, it's a train of thought, right? The whole, you know, 1980s greed is good. That's a train of thought. The conservative push, like there was a book I wanted this guy to help me ghostwrite about conservatism and how uh, people say, you know, what are you trying to conserve? You know, these old white principles? No, like common sense principles, like families first, right? Family, the, the United States built on families. Yes, we have, a rare, you know, um, a lot more single moms, a lot more baby mama situations. But at the end of the day, we still should be giving tax breaks, incentives to families and families who purchase homes and all that other stuff, right? So look, back to the 80s, right? Another thing about back to the 80s is if you really look at it, it, it you couldn't cancel a brand, right? <laughs> you couldn't, right? Now, I talked about in the first part of that video about tokenism and how, you know, people really are satisfied going kind of back into this low IQ conversation of like, well, see, there's this one black guy that's a Republican or this one, that's not, that's not true representation. That's not true diversity. That's really whack. People notice it, right? So now, Trump with this spec. Why does it crack me up? I'm out here in northern New York. The Trump signs are a plenty. They're every other door, right? And you may say, well, it doesn't matter, Erica. Those towns only have a thousand people or 400 people or this, but that's not true. How do brands make money? They get all these little small areas and it starts to snowball towards the bigger areas. You only need a couple really big areas to make your money. Now, what do I mean, a couple big areas? If you get a couple counties that are huge, heavily populated in California, that are Republican, you make your money. You get some counties out in Utah, heavily Mormon, you get your money. You pick a few, you know, counties out in Texas, you get your money. And that's what people don't understand. They think, you know, Donald Trump's a joke and, and all this stuff is funny to them for whatever reasons. And I'm gonna stop for a second because I've got to record this absolutely beautiful place that I'm in right now. I must. I must. You must see it, right? So people think they're gonna cancel Donald Trump when it doesn't make any sense what you're saying because you can't cancel a brand. Cancel culture doesn't exist. And what they're showing you right now is cancel culture doesn't exist. That Donald Trump can say any, just about anything at this point and raise money because that's what people want. They want that brand. They just do. You can't make people not want something. And that's the problem. People are pissed because they can't force people to not want Donald Trump's brand. Now, also, think about it. We have Al-Qaeda or Taliban, however you want to call them today. Whatever you want to call them today. They have a Twitter account. You have lots of people with Twitter accounts that say inflammatory things. But if you got a Tariq Nasheed, you got a somebody say, hey, you know, seems like we got like a an agenda here with all the the token gay characters in every single show and every single place we're cramming that down people's throats people don't want to see that they get banned minister farrakhan banned right you've got all kind of white supremacists violent gang material on here but these people who honestly one have a brand are being canceled so it means what who controls the platform same thing when we complain about Twitter and YouTube and how things are happening. Um, what what happens is people, they can see it. They're, they're not that dumb. I know you think everybody's low IQ that follows Trump or people are low IQ. Again, again, they have money. <laughs> I am keep trying to bring it. If you go and every single one of these people want to donate $100 a year to this brand, to this platform, they're going to do it. Prime example, 
there is a messenger kind of uh similar to facebook Messenger, but it's called signal right and it was kind of birthed after the whole donald trump thing it was kind of birthed at that point and people start going on it and people are like oh you're over there on signal erica it's an echo chamber of hate well now I look up and majority of my friends regardless of where they fall and if they voted for Biden or whatever they're over there why because people like to communicate with each other people want to use a messenger system and what what is Facebook's biggest threat at this point is the massive amount of blocking they've been doing when I see confederate flags in areas where I'm like y'all weren't in the confederacy anyway um you see this massive amount of blocking of people's conversations people's posts people going to facebook jail honestly the reason facebook's even been worth it's been hilarious to me is watching all the conservative people fight to be on it so now you have this space that's going to be provided to people and it's a big f you to what facebook mark zuckerberg all these people they're going to flock to it it just makes sense why does it make sense because they want to show a big finger to the establishment right period something he said the other day all the people who want to be vaccinated are vaccinated think about that all the people are like oh yeah i gotta get this done right now in a quarter right now. mile slight left toward us 9 north now you're pushing against the resistance of people who are like i don't want it no thank you no you must do it i don't want it no thank you so you've already gotten and I really don't even believe we have 50% of society doing it, but I, uh, if they say that, I'll, I'll just go with it. Who are supposedly vaccinated, okay? Take the next That's who you got. That's it. North. <laughs> That's it. There's no, that you're really not gonna get more from a natural conversation. Like, hey, would you like to do this? Oh, okay. Continue for six miles. No, thank you. And so, and so now you have to have this argument with people for them to understand like, people don't want that. They've decided, right? But here's the difference. They changed the rules when you learn how to play the game. We've heard this a million times where black people are like, well, they changed it now that black people are doing it. And I used to laugh at that, like, oh, come on, man. You know, come on, man. But now I, I sometimes I have to agree they do change the rules on certain things when, when the masses understand it, right? We would like to thank our Classy Climb Tour and channel sponsor, the Van Hill Group LLC out of the DMV area. If you are looking to invest in multifamily properties in DC, Virginia, North Carolina, and Ohio regions, reach out for free to our team at Malik at VanHillGroup.com. So now we talked about SPACs and people, how people hated SPACs. Oh, you know, why would anybody, you know, vote to a SPAC, right? And I said, look, Michael Dale comes out and say, hey, I'm gonna put together some company. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but here's the SPAC and you can invest in it early. People are investing in it off of the back of Michael Dale's who he is, what he says, Dell Computers, how he's changed Austin, Round Rock Express, all that stuff, okay? All those investments. Uh, other SPACs are off the name of the person who creates the SPAC. They don't know what they're gonna make, but they want to be ready with cash in hand to invest. So, if Donald Trump, who's been completely talking about mainstream media and how CNN's numbers are down in the dumps and they don't even have nothing, they don't have no way to, you know, bump their numbers unless he's the topic of conversation, he starts a SPAC, all of a sudden it's like, oh, SPACs are bad. Yeah, we shouldn't even, nobody should invest in SPACs. Oh, they're dangerous. I even see my friends who are neutral. They're financial analysts, neutral. They're all of a sudden saying, yeah, SPACs are bad. This is scamming people. I'm like, you just did three videos on other people's SPACs that were just fine. But now because this person's doing it, oh, it's, it's bad, it's a scam. So this is my big, big part of like, you can't kill an ideal. You can't counsel a person. If their brand is that strong and they keep marketing themselves, right he can't mark himself on twitter anymore because you know if he could he'd be every day he'd be attacking um biden and the policies and how things are going he'd be attacking it so now boom splash in the water this stock went from nine dollars to 45 dollars it's like a 356 percent increase in one day because of his announcement to being attached to them so uh and your girl listen full disclaimer purchasing yes purchasing uh, want to be a part of that ride because what happens is you can't kill an ideal 
you can't you can't kill an ideal um I think the I think the quote is you can't kill an ideal whose time has come. I can't remember the exact wording, but I think it's something of that line. And what people think is, well, you know, if we just keep telling people it's so bad, he's so bad. Well, why is he so bad? Tell me how he's bad. And then they keep they keep rehashing these low IQ talking points. It doesn't make sense, right? Again, people love an underdog story. Even though this man's supposed to be a billionaire, people love a fighter story right and so again you're seeing the masses tell you they don't like something same thing here with youtube right let's just go there youtube tried to shove down your throat stuff that people didn't want alternative lifestyle stuff we didn't want we don't want that stop showing it to us right so then of course gun channels family channels happy kids happy families religious couples rel churches their YouTube channels boomed. And I think YouTube did not expect that because on the recommended page, when you first come on YouTube, the recommended page is, is little Nas X and other mess that you don't, people don't want. The masses don't want it. You dig what I'm saying here? So this is why I said back to 1980s again, music concerts. You have all these bands, recent 1990s, 2000 bands playing gigs. They want people to take, you know, a shot. People are like, okay, I won't come. You have a bunch of 1980s band members, Stevie Nicks, all these old bands playing that had hits in the 80s, 30 plus years ago. All right, almost 40 years ago for some of them. Selling out shows all over the place. Why? Because people with the money, that is people in their late 30s to 50s with money and will go out of their house, are supporting them. Again, I don't know why people don't understand this concept. This stock will go up high. Unless there's some sugary, this stock will go up high. Because you can't kill an ideal. You can't kill an ideal and you can't kill a brand. And the ideal is Washington doesn't listen to the American people. Uh, big media is putting things in front of my children in my face that I don't want. Dave Chappelle is being canceled because he's addressing why, why, why are y'all trying to cancel this? And not that, right? Uh, even when, you know, NFL, people are like, I'll never support NFL again. Those people kneeling, how dare them kneel. They are there to shut their mouths. And guess what? They back watching NFL. Again, people's memories are short, very short. And they, they don't really recognize how short their memories are. And so they say these things they really don't mean, okay? So again, people are back watching NFL, they're back filling up the football stadiums, they're back going to concerts, they're doing all these things that people are like, but but these people should stay in the house. And I'm telling you, it's back to the 1980s. It is, people, people saw what it was like to stay in the house for a year and they're like, no, no thank you. If that's the future you want, you guys can have that. I'm telling you, there, there's so many families I saw out here in RVs and campers. I was like, I know it's school time. This is the middle of the week. The parents are like, no, thank you. They're walking away from it. Have my kid cooped up with a mask on all day? No, thank you. I'd rather take them on vacation with me out here to a lake town, which there's a thousand of these little lake towns. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I really want you to understand what's happening. We're going back to the 1980s, man going back to the 1980s and it really isn't even that this man's a rallying cry it's just it's just we can't agree on statistical facts right even if you see florida right now florida is thriving now you know you can pull up a hundred people in here about florida they're gonna complain about how their uncle john and cousin benny and them work low-income jobs nobody told them to do that in florida <laughs> i made a video talking about how people really are gonna have to understand that nobody nobody cares like you chose to live there figure it out figure out if you got to do remote work you got to do some other type of work you got to figure it out no one no one cares so you're in florida you're complaining because the jobs don't pay well even though there are high paying jobs in florida they pay and travel and nurses to come there so you couldn't become a nurse you couldn't work in healthcare. you couldn't work a job that was going to pay you more no you've chosen this this level of, of where you're at Right? Oh, there's extreme poverty in Florida. Okay, well, go be a nurse. Well, I don't want to be a nurse. Okay, what do you want to go be? I, I, then okay, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> We're just getting back to statistical facts. 
Florida has income. It has money. It has people who are relocated there. There's money being made in Florida. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Stonebridge Road. Their numbers at the end of all this will not be as bad as New York's, period. Well, New York's more stacked. Listen, y'all, it's the policies. Point by period. And so what we're, what we're coming across is just common sense math. People are trying to fight you on math. Take the next left onto Stonebridge Road. You, you just can't. You can't. No, you can't sell people wolf tickets they don't want. Okay? So again, uh, this back is going to go through the roof. In a quarter mile, turn right onto the I-87 North Ramp. I would not be surprised if they started trying to change the rules on SPACs all of a sudden. Oh, we need to do this differently because SPACs are doing A, B, and C all of a sudden. Oh, it's just bad, right? It's going to start changing the rules. Period. They're going to start trying to change the rules. And same thing. I mean, there's so much more I can go to. But back to the 1980s. Turn right onto the I-87 North Ramp. That's what we're going through right now is back to the 80s and thoughts and principles what's old is new again and outfits and clothes and music and continue on i-87 north for 10 miles and i laugh because people you know people are really getting into identity politics where i'm a black person and i'm a this and that means nothing in this economy nothing not a thing so anyways you guys this is your girl erica classic line blog thank you for coming along with me